Hello everybody, I'm uh, happy to be here from Tel Aviv University. I'd like to talk about a technology for uh, detecting uh, counterfeit uh, uh, items uh, for nanoprinting. So the, uh, let's talk first about the impact of counterfeit. Uh, worldwide is a huge loss of billions and billions of dollars from uh, counterfeit products in different industries such as um, pharmaceuticals, uh, clothes, jewelry, um, documents, uh, parts. The, uh, some shocking uh, uh, data you might uh, not be familiar with is a quarter of automotive parts are um, counterfeit. That means they're not going through quality control. Uh, and of course, we're all aware of what can happen in those uh, types of cases where you have uh, bad parts. And if that's not enough to, uh, to really scare you, then 2% uh, of, of uh, airplane parts are, are also uh, found to be counterfeit. So um, I don't know about you, but I think I'm going to take the boat home because uh, you know, these can be a very uh, uh, a traumatic uh, risk. So you want to have good authentication marks, and let's put together a wish list. If you could have you know, anything you wanted as far as an authentication mark, what would you do? Well, you'd like it to be extremely difficult, difficult to, to reproduce. I mean, that's, that's the whole point, that, uh, that the counterfeiter cannot, uh, cannot reproduce the mark. Secondly, it's got to be simple and inexpensive to, uh, to, to, uh, to produce, to, to make these marks. And finally, it has to be easy to read to authenticate. Now, notice that some of these uh, requirements are, are self-contradictory. On one hand, you want, it to have, you want it to be very difficult to manufacture. On the other hand, it's got to be simple and inexpensive to reproduce. So, um, you know, that's, that's very difficult to do. So, there are existing uh, technologies. Uh, there, these, are, these are obviously well known. We're not inventing the idea of uh, uh, counterfeit uh, uh, verification marks. Uh, you know, holograms and RFID and different technologies. They all suffer from certain drawbacks. Uh, sometimes it's privacy. They're, they're, uh, often they can, can be uh, counterfeited themselves. Uh, the counterfeiters are trying to stay a step ahead of the, uh, uh, the, the, the genuine uh, marks. So uh, there is definitely a niche for increased uh, type of technology for security printing. Our concept uh, has to do with nanotechnology. Uh, it, uh, it evolved from work done by, in our electrical engineering department in a completely different application, but we realized that you could use nanotechnology to get a, a, a special footprint where you could read uh, the uh, uh, diffraction ex exposure of uh, the, uh, um, the, the, the nano imprint that you do. So you can get high resolution and low cost at the same time, which uh, corresponds to what we had in our uh, wish list. So what you can get is very high security. Basically, it's uh, you know a nano level, and uh, you can get at any kind of security level you want, depending on how complicated you make it. It's extremely small, so it doesn't take up much space. It's invisible, it's passive, and uh, it can be done relatively inexpensive. And of course, it's versatile. You can be used on many different types of uh, 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 substrates. So the expensive part, the one time off is the mask. That's like your master, and uh, this is extremely expensive. You need ex uh, very, very expensive machinery, millions of dollars, very skilled personnel to make it. You outsource this, and this is the piece that if it gets stolen, it's like the master plate of the, of the engravings for the United States dollar. This is the one you want to keep. But once you've done this part, everything goes much easier. Then we use uh, simple uh, rep replica molding to, to make our, our mold and our rubber stamps. So we use actual rubber stamps to put this imprint on. The concept works like this. Uh, you have our, in this case, a, a pharmaceutical. You stamp it with the stamp. Then you move it forward. When you want to read and see if it's authenticated, you shoot a beam at it and you look at the diffraction pattern. Na note, note that we're not actually looking at uh, what, what the image itself looks like, but a diffraction pattern. So if you have in your database, if it's matching your diffraction pattern, then you get it verified. And if not, you'll get that it's uh, phony. So you get a, a, a stamp. We've used a rubber stamp. And here's a uh, sample of, of how it looks like. Thousands of stamps we've done. It's very durable. Uh, we've seen no degradation over thousands. Incredibly uh, cheap. It's got a lot of advantages. You can have very high resolution. OK, I'll just go through that. And it's extremely difficult to reproduce. And actually, it's practically impossible to reproduce. You can have as much security as you like. The authenticator itself, we're talking about using uh, diffraction, so you can have uh, a very low cost uh, source of light and a sensor on the other side, so this should not be too expensive. Our current state of development is uh, that we've been able to, to manufacture these. These are actual images of uh, patterns that we've done. Uh, 
uh, very small. We, you use very cheap UV curable polymers, so it's very quick, very easy to manufacture. Substrates are incredibly versatile. These will adhere to all kinds of different uh, substrates. And we've made thousands. We just stopped because we were tired of doing it. We're doing it by hand. So some back of the envelope calculations are the cost of the master mask that you hold on to one time should be high, and that is uh, 5 to 15K. And the stamp itself is a few dollars. The, each imprint is, is almost free, it's very, very cheap, and uh, the authenticator between $300 and $350. So what we're looking for, we're a university, we don't manufacture products, we don't have a management team, we have technology, we, we try to license out the technology, we go through two tracks, we're either looking for entrepreneurs who can uh, set up a startup around the technology, or companies that want to branch out into different areas and are willing to in-license our technology.